Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. Um, so I've started a new project, um, building a dresser in a sort of mid-century style. Um, building it out of, mostly out of uh, mahogany plywood. Um, as you saw, I've started milling up the plywood a little bit. I just kind of, I've got it to the point where I've milled most of the, the carcass box itself. Um, it has some interesting additions that I've added to it to um, make it sort of fit my location specifically, but I wanted to make sure that it still functioned in any location, right? So like while I'm making a couple of tweaks to it that are specific for me, it won't hinder it from going somewhere else. And I just kind of wanted to talk over those a little bit. Um, <clears throat> just overall, it's a box, it's got four legs, it's got uh, one, two, three, four, seven drawers. So the top row is gonna have three drawers. The two bottom rows are gonna have two drawers each. So basically the way I'm building it is, it's gonna be an out outer box with um, frames dividing the two, the three drawer sections, so two frames essentially. But it presented a little bit of a challenge because since the bottom two rows have only two drawers, they only get a middle divider, right? So they get, they get one middle divider where the top row gets two dividers because it's three drawers. So I had to build a web frame there and then I built another web frame down here just because that way I can have like equal spacing. And the outside of it, I wanted to the drawers to fit flush, but I still want to see the dividers, right? So like everything's going to be, um, what do you call it? Uh, proud. I'm going to give it some like touches that we'll talk about later on um, to make it a little bit mid-century-ish. So I just kind of wanted to show you where I'm at with the milling because it's it's got it's got its own interesting little problems. The top is 18 inches deep, right? The whole cabinet itself is going to be, I mean the dresser, I think it's going to be 60. Um, that seems like a pretty standard measurement. It also fits perfect where I'm going to put it. Um, so it's 60 wide by 18 deep. Now the reality is, is only the top and the sides are 18 deep. And this is where I was talking about getting it specifically, specifically for my room. It's got two dividers because that's, that'll be like this, right? So that'll be on the top. And that's first row gets these two dividers because it gets three drawers. The top itself is gonna be mitered so that you don't see a seam or any edges um, to hide the plywood essentially. But I also don't like the way, um, if I made it out of solid wood, you know, you always see that end grain or something and it just, I don't know, something about it, I'd rather have the corner mitered on the top. The bottom itself is not mitered because the bottom, the, the side panels just go all the way down into a rabbit and then that gets that you won't, you don't see that anyway. So um, now the bottom piece, this is the bottom piece. Uh, let me lift it up here. Only gets one dado in it because it'll only have one divider, right? So because this I'll have two drawers, it gets one divider up. Oh, let me just talk about the size. So the bottom piece is is only 15 and a half inches deep. So that should give me about two and a half inches of sort of space behind it. And the reason I do that is because where I'm, where I'm gonna be putting this dresser in, I have a lot of cords, you know, my Xbox, my TV uh, cords, everything kind of fits behind it. And I'm gonna try to put a, a, a surge protector strip onto this dresser where everything plugs in and it just goes neatly in behind it. But it still looks like it's up against the wall, right? Because the top and the bottom sides are technically up against the wall, but since the bottom has less space and so does the back panel, there's a cavity there and that cavity will be where all my electronic cable junk is gonna be. So let me show you these. This is essentially the, the middle divider, which fits there. <clears throat> and these won't stay on, so I'm just gonna show it to you. The middle divider, gets a dado right in the middle because that'll have a frame 
Um, and then the sides, each side gets mitered at the top because it matches the top miter, gets a rabbit at the bottom, it's a rabbit at the bottom so that it's, you know, it rabbits over the bottom, and then it gets two dividers. Because these will go like this, right? So like, and here's where you'll see, I hope you can see it, down here you'll see that there's a, it's, it's actually longer than the bottom piece so that I'll have that cavity. So this gets two dividers because, you know, this goes like this, and it gets a frame from here to here, and from here to there, dividing these two drawers. And then this frame goes all the way across, and then that'll hold the dividers for the three drawers up top. So that should be interesting. I'm gonna work on the frames next, but I needed to get to this far so I can just do actual measurements, uh, making sure you know what the distances are, hoping everything is square and, and pretty close to my plans, but you never know. So that's the side center divide here's the other side that goes on on you know just basically the same thing it's a mirror image so that goes there these two pieces are the top dividers you know they basically are just dividing the two drawers so those are the easiest ones those are just basics um, and then there's the the top piece right so then there's the top so that's the box essentially so i'm going to do an initial glue up of the side panels of the carcass um, and then I'll do the middle panels and everything um, last or actually the top will be last but the middle panels will be next. So first thing I have set up the the angle uh, right angle whatever these things are square so that I can glue it clamp it down get it ready so let's go. Here's open. <laughs> I hate those glues. So everything's glued up except for these, which I'll glue up last. I just needed them for spacing and height. Um, but I'll pull them out, put glue in once these dry a bit. So now that the carcass is all uh, glued up, next is going to be putting on the the face frame, the edging. I guess it's it's like a face frame, but it's not really. It's just edging. Um, I've cut the outside square of the edging to a tapered edge, right? So like they're all mitered at the corners, but the actual, it's hard to show, but like the, let's see if I can get it to focus here. The, the shape of this is triangular. The, the middle dividers and the, the up and down dividers are cut to a quarter inch thick edging like this. And then the bottom piece and the top piece and the side pieces are all at an angle. And so that angle, the, the small part ends up at a quarter inch and the top part ends up at just over a half an inch. Let's start putting on the edge.
So I've been sanding it all down. Um, now that it's all basically constructed, I'm going to clean it off with denatured alcohol. And also, that'll also show me if there's any places that I've either missed sanding or there's still some glue left over. So I didn't really see any uh, any parts where I need to um, clean up. It looks like I got most of the most of it, or at least or, or all of the glue joints. Um, everything looks sanded right. What I did notice by doing it is there's a lot of sharp edges, right? So so like you know this is really sharp. So I need to go through and give it one last like sanding, getting rid of all the sharp edges before the finish which means I'll have to clean it up again, but I'm glad I did it because there's a lot of really sharp edges that I just completely forgot to, to round over. And then after that, I'm going to apply the uh, armor seal to the top, the sides, the front. So the carcass is pretty much done. I, I'm going to put the feet on right now. I selected these um, hairpin metal feet. All right. This one's bugging me a little bit. It looks a little crooked. Not that it matters, but it's just bugging me. Well, that domino makes pretty quick work of uh, those mortises for the drawers. So you saw me cutting the grooves into the drawer sides and the drawer backs. Um, basically it's just a quarter inch groove, a quarter inch deep, a quarter inch above. Um, and that's just to accept the bottom panel. I tend to like to put the dominoes into the ends of the boards. Sort of creating as if they were the, the tenons and then I'm going to be putting them into the mortises. 
mounted with drawer slides on the sides that's why there's a gap on the sides and then they'll float in the middle of this and then they'll have like a uh, front actually let me show you what I'm going to use for that so I have these mahogany boards and I bought three of them because um, what I want to do is have continuous grain all the way across right so what I'll do is I'll cut this piece to length and then cut the slides or the uh, drawer fronts to work with that and hopefully we'll have three pieces that have complete grain all the way across. So I've been working on fitting the drawer fronts to the drawer, uh, to the to the case and the drawers. All these drawers are in, here I'll show you, careful. All these drawers are in, done, they've been set to place. And you know, different people go about it different ways. I just wanted to show you the way I do it. Once I get the depth set, <clears throat> I use playing cards. And I use the, the six card method, right? Um, one, two, three, four, five, six cards. Um, why six cards? I just like that amount. Um, you can, it, it's basically just gonna be the, the gap, the reveal. The reason I use six cards first is because then I can measure like the top, okay, it's nice and tight, goes all the way across. And I use a combination of, you know, hand planes, sanding, trying to get everything fitted so that we have six cards. And I usually do six cards up top, uh, that make it fit all the way across, and then six cards on one of the sides that fits all the way. And what that really does is gives me a three card reveal. And I keep saying cards, but that's, that's, that's kind of just how I do it. I like using cards as shims or as um, spacers and stuff because uh, when you buy a pack of cards each card is exactly the same usually um, there's very little variance within each card so if I put three cards now three cards later three cards on one side three cards on the other I know it's exactly the same to me it's easier than measuring so what I just did is I put three cards on each side so now I know that when I put this in here that's gonna be my sort of my final fit and my reveal is three cards up top and three cards at the bottom. And I do the same with the sides. So the sides, one, two, three, four, five, six. You know, I get six on each side, six on one side, and then I divide that into three and three. So I got three, and it looks like I'm a little off, but not enough to, to really show a difference. Um, so there we go. That's how I fit my drawers. Um, wide three cards, I just like that distance. I like that amount of reveal. Makes it easy for me. Um, but in reality, you know, people do it differently. Some people measure, some people use something else. I just find having playing cards in the shop is really a good thing. You can shim things up, they're always the same, like I said. It, it's just a, 
easy way of doing things. And of course, buy cheap playing cards. <laughs> These actually are from MGM Detroit. So, so as you saw, I got all the drawer fronts fitted to the dresser. Um, you know, and then I spent a long time sanding these down. Um, I went through all the grits. I started at 80, uh, then I went to 120, then I went to 150, then I went to 220, and they're really soft. Then I, um, I actually had to leave for a while, let the shop clear off because there was dust everywhere. I turned on the, the fans and the filters. Um, and just left for a while, let it all settle down. And then I came back and I uh, cleaned off all these things. I just wiped them down with uh, some denatured alcohol. And uh, they're now ready to finish. So I'm gonna put on the first coat tonight. Um, and then I might even, you know, come back a little later and put on a second coat, usually around you know, four hours, four and a half hours, four or five hours in between quotes seems to work well. Um, at least during the day, I'm not sure about overnight because my garage will get a little cold, but it shouldn't be too cold tonight. So um, we'll see. I'll come and check it if I don't fall asleep. I mean, it's like nine o'clock right now. So uh, I'm turning them over because I want to do the back side first so that when I put them so that when I leave them overnight, that backside is facing down. And I'm putting them on little pieces of wood. Uh, the back won't matter as much because it, it's covered by the, um, by the drawer boxes themselves anyway. So uh, this will work just fine for the final kind of, for like leaving them drying. It'll probably stick to them, but that's okay. So, what I'm going to use, whew, it's armor seal. Um, guess I didn't wipe that down. Huh. So, I have this can of armor seal, and uh, it's half of uh, whatever this is, quart. So, should be enough, I'm hoping. If not, I'm going to be in real trouble, I guess. <laughs> But let's start. And this first coat, you know, I usually put on fairly thick, fairly loose, because it's going to get, you know, mostly soaked into the to the to the board itself. So it doesn't really matter too much. But I still like to put it on evenly. So I don't have to sand it too much. And I always start with the backs because I'll turn them over and then I can do the fronts and you know the backs don't matter as much because they're mostly covered by the drawer boxes themselves anyways. Ooh, this is really soaking it up like crazy. which is good. That's what I want with this first coat, basically. I just want it to soak into the wood. And then with each coat after this, we'll actually build. My dog is having an argument with a squirrel or something outside. I can hear him. He doesn't seem like he's having a good time. Or maybe he is having a good time, but he seems like he's protecting the house. He does not like it when squirrels or possums or anything like that 
invades the house. I can hear him. Catch it! What is it, bud? What is it? Huh? What is it? I've given the uh, drawer fronts three coats of armor seal. Uh, I've sanded in between each one. I gave it a final sanding with a uh, 500 grit real light, get it real smooth. I'm going to give it its last coat, hopefully. Um, this should be a relatively thin coat, and uh, hopefully that'll be the last coat and, you know, let it dry for 24 hours and then start installing them. They're looking really good. By the way, the inside boxes of the drawers, um, I finished with shellac, just a spray shellac. Gave it a, a real light sanding at the end, just to, um, To get them real smooth and real uh, nice feeling when you touch them because you know it is a dresser so you will be touching it this is the final coat so I'm giving it a real thin coat but I want to make sure I get a nice even coat all the way around and then I'm going to try to wipe it all in one direction just to try to get it as even as possible. Armor Steel has been my favorite wood finish for a long time. Um, I've been watching a lot of people been using those oil wax ones now like uh, Rubio Monaco and Osmo and I've been wanting to try them and I was going to try this one but on, on this project but I decided I had a, almost a full can of this armor seal so maybe the next project I'll show you one little tip that I do so I used to use those little painter triangles underneath these uh, the panels and they work great don't get me wrong but they're expensive when you start to try to buy a whole bunch of them and you know for something like this where I gotta have a whole bunch you know there's four underneath each one of these and there's seven of them so four times seven is higher math than I can do but you know to buy 28 of those little standoffs would be you know too expensive for what they are so if you're only doing like one panel that's fine but if you're doing a whole bunch of panels it becomes a bigger issue so the way I solved it and I actually like them better I'll show you in a second let me just finish this last one I don't know if you can see it from over there, but I've been using uh, plastic measuring cups. You know, this is a, what is this, one ounce cup? And you know, I'll buy a, like a bag from Amazon for like a hundred of them for like pennies. And they work great. They're perfect little standoffs. Um, cheap and they're actually not necessarily better than the painter strangers because they do have a bigger area. But when you're doing something where the back doesn't matter as much, or you're doing one set at a time, these, these are great. So I've been playing around trying to figure out the best way to get the drawer fronts onto these drawer boxes in this tight space. And I think I figured it out. I did one um, 
and I'll show you how I did it. I'll do the, I'll do another one, and then I'll have to start doing all of them. So the first thing I did obviously is take out this drawer, which is not the drawer I'm working on, um, but I need the access from above. So just FYI, happy accident. Um, when I originally built this, I was going to have full um, solid dividers between the, the panels. And uh, I'm really glad I didn't because now I have access to this drawer from above. And then once I remove these, I'll have access to these. And then what I'm thinking of doing for the top ones actually is removing these drawers and coming in from below, just taking off the, the drawer bottoms from these. Um, because I can't get up from on top on basically. But so here's what I'm doing. All right, so I have access from above now. That's fine. I'll, I'll get the drawer front that belongs here. And I'm making sure it's the correct one because of the grain. And see that, that grain pattern goes right across. All right, so then what I did next was um, I did my playing card trick. Now that I have it sort uh, centered, laid out, all I did was come in from behind and shoot two brads just to hold it in place and then screw it in. Make sure the brads are not going to go all the way through, right? So make sure you have the right size brads. Shooting those breads should hold it long enough for me to be able to get the screws in there. Okay. All right, so in here, it's just a matter of screwing it down. A couple of little tricks. Um, put a flag, tape flag on it to get your depth. I'm using <clears throat> a playing card. These playing cards that I got um, are dead playing cards so they have a hole right through the middle of them and it makes the perfect uh, alignment tool so I don't have to like guess at it. It'll make the screws be in the same spot on all, on all drawers. It doesn't really matter if they are or not. I just like being consistent like that. And again, you got to make sure they don't go through, but they're deep enough to, to hold it. One thing I noticed is you got to be real careful because pine is real so soft. Mine is so soft and this gun is so strong that if I if I over torque it, it'll go right through that pine. And the uh, the mahogany is so hard that it'll just pull right through the pine. Even though it's a flathead pen head screw, um, it's it's they sell ones with bigger washers on them, which I might end up changing it to. Um, later on but this is what I have right now all right they're on I just like to check it make sure it's tight and I debated putting them in the center but I didn't have to because once I get the drawer pulls in there those will be screwed in the center and then that'll pull the center part together so now let's put it in just to check it. Perfect. 
Perfect. So I've made a little bit more progress on it. Um, I've put the back in and I slid the back in into the groove um, that I've made before and I'll, I'll show you the back of it because I want to show you how I ended up giving that space that I was talking about earlier on. Now I'm working on the drawer fronts and let me show you. So. So I've been avoiding putting it all the way in because once the back is in, it makes it hard to open these. That's what the tab is there for. So I got the drawers, the front's already done. They're finished. They're probably a few days into curing, so that's pretty good. They'll be done soon. And I bought these drawer pulls. And they're just real simple, just sort of a straight pull. And I'm going to Right now I'm thinking it's going to be centered. It might be a little high up. I'm not sure. I'm, I'm trying to decide whether I like it right in the center or a little higher up or just off. So I got to try to figure that out. I debated going this way, but I didn't like that. Um, so I'm going to go like that. So that's what that's going to look like. I think that'll look pretty cool. So for those drawer pulls, I'm making this little jig, which is like a center finder. And then I have the holes for the small ones and then the bottom drawers will get a bigger one so that's how i'll find find the center and then i'll drill the holes and then that way they should all be in the same exact spot um let me bring you to the back of it so that you can see the little space that i left i put in the back and basically it slid in to a groove that runs all the way across it's a quarter inch groove the way it's, it's similar to the way you do drawers like the bottoms of drawers it's all slid in and the bottom gets screwed so if I ever, for whatever reason, need to get in there to fix it, this comes off really easily. Um, and then the, the main reason I did that the, uh, was because I wanted to leave this three inch gap that I talked about at the beginning of this project. Um, basically, I'm still debating on how I'm gonna drill a hole up here so that the cables that sit on here can all come down here and then I can mount um, like plugs, like extension cords and stuff like that, that all get plugged into here and then one cord just goes out to the wall socket. That way I don't have to worry about too many cords or anything like that because it's a mess in my dresser right now, um, which we'll see when we get there. Um, but so that's the back. Um, it's just a quarter inch plywood, um, which is perfectly fine. Everything's looking pretty good. So I hope you can see it, but down here, I was worried that this thing was gonna sag, right? And I'm pretty sure it would have, because even, even the little bit of time that I had it up there, I started noticing it sagging a little bit. So what I ended up doing is I just made like a center support piece um, that, that'll hold it up, you know, over time. So while you can see it, it's not too visible. It's just a straight little piece. Um, it's super strong because I made it out of leftover uh, uh, sapili, or not sapili, sorry, mahogany, whatever the African mahogany is. Um, so it should work out perfectly, but I had to do that because I felt like it was going to sag and I'm pretty sure it would have. So now let's work on the, uh, putting the drawer fronts on. This is scary. <clears throat> okay, so I have that little template I made set up now. As you can see, I, I, I marked a center line here and it aligns with the center line of this. 
and then the two inner holes align to the small one and this little jig aligns at the top here it's got the space up here and I'm just I'm just uh, clamping it down but the space so that the the space from the top to the to the whatever middle it's not exactly the middle I, I ended up going a little higher is always going to be the same on all drawers huh <sighs> so I've been dreading doing this part I've been scared of it I guess I don't know because it's finally drilling holes into these fronts but this is what I've decided and I'm going with it so here we go Let's see how it looks, shall we? I think I like it. Yeah, I definitely like it. It's finished. Um, I'm gonna leave it in here to cure completely for probably a week longer. Um, most of the finish, the finish on the actual case is about two weeks old. The finish on the drawers is only about a week old. I'd like to give them at least another week, especially for the outer case, because in my dresser, where, where this dresser goes, I actually have stuff on top of it, like the Xbox, and stuff like that on top of it. Um, I still haven't made the hole in the back. I haven't quite figured out how I'm going to do that. Um, I, I just, I'm scared of it. <laughs> kind of don't want to, like, you know, put a hole in this. Um, but... You know that was the whole point of it so i'm definitely gonna do it it's gonna i want to figure out like what's the coolest design for a hole is it like a slit is it you know I, i'm still trying to debate seeing what i'm doing research on what i can do with it um i really like the way it came out i i i was worried about these pulls because i wasn't sure if it was going to be the right look or not but i i like the way they ended up i i didn't want to do the hole at the top or or just a hole in it i, I just wasn't it just wasn't right for me. I didn't like it. Um, and then I debated the little poles and just like a little metal tab on top of it. I went through a whole lot of like different styles that I was I was trying to picture what would be the best. And, and I finally decided on these and I'm glad I did because I really like the way it makes it look. Um, it's, it's modern but still not, um, it's not like strange modern, right? It's not out of the ordinary. It's, it's pretty... I wanted to keep that mid-century vibe to it going, so and I think I think these drawers still do that. Um, so I really hope you enjoyed this project. It was a long one, um, but you know, speaking a little bit about the times, you know, this is I'm building this during the the COVID-19 pandemic, and it's been you know a really weird time uh, for everybody. I'm sure it's been tragic. It's been crazy. It's it's been just awful right but um, I'm one of the lucky ones that I've been able to still go to work I mean not really go to work I've been working from home but my job equates me with the fact where I have been able to work completely so I have been I've been really lucky in that sense um, but also that gave me a lot of time to to really work on this project usually these projects would take me a long long time because I have very little time you know from work and stuff but since I haven't been having to drive to work and stuff like that I've been I've been able to to work on it early in the morning, late at night, after work, whatever. But I was able to get it done. You know, I really enjoyed this build and, and it was probably, I'm not gonna say it's the biggest build I've ever done because it's not, but it's, it, it was one of the most challenging because I really wanted the elegance of this mid-century modern piece, right? Um, the other one that I did was a more of a restoration, a restoration. So this one, this one was a complete build. Um, the legs, I just bought hairpin legs. I did four inches. Um, I debated. This is this is probably one of the biggest things I debated about this thing because I have two dogs and they love their balls and I'm constantly digging balls from under the dresser. <laughs> so I debated making a solid piece down there, but I looked at it and I wasn't happy with it. I really liked the way this looked. 
So I guess I'm just stuck chasing balls underneath the dresser for the rest of my life. Um, I did add the back that you guys saw with the, the cavity on it. I think that, that added a special difference than normal dressers that, that, that's specifically for my needs. And well, I really hope you guys enjoyed it and I will uh, see you guys in my bedroom. Second bedroom, office. It's the other bedroom that we use for everything and that's where this dresser's gonna go. All right, well, it turned out real, real nice. It, um, it fits perfectly. Uh, it's about the right height above, you know, for where I have the TV set up. And uh, this is what I was telling you where I have a lot of things that I kind of put on top of it. Um, I haven't fixed these cables yet, but they'll eventually go behind this this thing. Uh, but basically, you know, my, my uh, network hard drives, my router, my computer that's hooked up to the TV that also runs our like home streaming media server thing and a couple of other things um, but basically I, I did drill a hole and actually the idea of having a hole in the back of a dresser now um, I, you know it's funny like you watch a lot of videos and a lot of new dressers being made and they don't account for the fact that in modern days we have a lot of things that are plugged in um, and I guess a lot of people don't put stuff on their dresser but you know uh, media is, is a big part of modern day life and a lot of our furniture just hasn't been updated for it, right? So like for me, leaving that space behind so that the, the actual dresser touches the wall on, you know, three sides so it looks like it's up against the wall um, really, really makes a big difference because usually you have like your, your furniture out in front of the, the wall so far because you have everything going behind it. And I hate it because you're always dropping things back there. Everything's falling back. Um, so I just think overall, like, as, you know, computers and TVs and hard drives and everything has become such a big part of life, I think some of our furniture needs to be updated for it. Um, and I think we just haven't really been updating it yet. But um, I was happy to, to do it with this project. And I think it, it's something that I'll probably be doing with a lot of my my furniture is excuse me not always adding the hole but at least always adding a cavity behind it so that you always have the ability to add a hole or some you know slit or something to account for the fact that things will always need to go behind it uh, I just wanted to share that because I think it's it's kind of an important sort of modern day modern times um, aspect of furniture all right well i hope you guys enjoyed watching the video it's a really long one um you know i've been trying to edit it to cut it down in size but you know it's a long one and uh please like subscribe and um i'll see you guys in the next one